Hey guys, it's Calvin, and this is a video that I don't usually do, or a type of video that I don't usually do. I'm going to be talking about my Wii U collection. Now, the funny thing about this is that I don't really have much of a collection. Uh, it's really just like eight games, but the eight games that I have for the Wii U are eight games that I love dearly. Most of the games that I own for the Wii U are from Virtual Console. I've bought so many games from the Virtual Console, and I've pretty much gone mostly digital with my games, apart from like collector's editions, or if I can find a cheaper version of a game in disc form, I will always go for that one as well, as most people should. But I think this is going to be kind of a fun video. Again, I don't usually do this type of stuff, so if I make mistakes or if the camera quality doesn't look that good, uh, I'll be fixing things over time. This is kind of like a test run. Let's do this. The first game I'm showing off right now is Tokyo Mirage Sessions Sharp FE. I hope I've said that right. Uh, this is an RPG or a musical RPG that released a couple of years back. And I remember when it first released, I really wanted to play it. But I think that at the time... There were so many games coming out at that period that I was like, I'll, I'll wait for a bit. And then it got to the point where I could not find a physical version anywhere. So I went online and tried to buy uh, a copy of this on the Virtual Console, or not on the Virtual Console, on the Wii U uh, eShop. And it turns out the game was still full price at 60 euro. Uh, but then one day I went into GameStop and I found that they were selling a brand new version, just one new version for 30 euro. And at that point, I was like, there's no way I can't pick this up. This is a really fun game. I uh, re-released on the Switch recently, but if you're looking for a cheaper version of this game, you might be able to find it if you own a Wii U. Um, now, I know they made a lot of improvements to the Switch version of this game, but I don't think you can go very much like in the wrong direction if you buy this game on the Wii U. I had a lot of fun with it. Um, I think that it has some great bosses, some great music, some great characters. The style is just popping uh, with color. And in a lot of ways, it really tried to carve its own way, because I feel like a lot of times people go, it's too much like Persona, but I really feel like as a, as a Persona fan as well, they really carved their own direction and their own way, uh, kind of into their own musically based genre. It's really cool. Next is Super Smash Brothers for the Wii U. I got this free with my Wii U uh, when I bought it. I bought the Wii U like second year of college, uh, I kind of just like saw it like I got the, I got the white version for 200 euro which was not too bad, especially when you get Smash Brothers free with it, it wasn't that bad of an idea. I'm not good at Smash Brothers. I never played the game, I think a lot of uh, my uh, subscribers would tell you that. Uh, they, I think we did like one game together on the Switch version and I got destroyed. It's just not a fun experience for me and I know it's a fun game for everyone else uh, so I'm not ever going to like bring it down, there's no point in that. I do like the character variety, I do like how much the effort they put into this game, how much updates they put into this game. I think that a lot of the DLC characters are really cool. As you know, I'm a big Dragon Quest fan, or maybe you don't know, so when Hero was announced for it, it was really cool. I'm also a big Persona fan, so when Jorga was announced for it, it was really cool. But the Wii U version of this game is actually really great, and I'm not saying that the Switch version is the Wii U port, because it's not. I know it's not a port. Before people get angry, I know it's not a port. Uh, but the Wii U Smash Brothers, I found to be a fun experience while I was playing it, and for the most part I think that like obviously the switch version is like the best version of Smash Brothers that you can probably play right now uh, but for me I'll always have a soft spot for this game on the Wii U uh, because it was my first ever Wii U game next on this list is Lego City Undercover another game that's been ported to modern consoles recently uh, still though I think there's a lot of value of owning it on the Wii U I don't really have to like I haven't really rebought any of the switch versions or the ps4 versions of Wii U games yet uh, but for me, I'll always love this game because it was, again, one of the first Wii U games I owned. I got it for dirt cheap. And the LEGO games have always had a certain appeal to me, but they lost appeal to me as I grew older. And I think it's because the humor kind of like stayed the same while I was getting much, much older. And in this case, the humor is kind of more geared to adults. It's a lot, it's very funny. I think it's funny in like a lot of kind of like giddyish kind of silly humor kind of way but still and like, like kind of like some tongue-in-cheek adult humor as well but it's a fun game and I think that if you can get it on the modern consoles as well it's a pretty good buy. Next is Super Mario Bros U. Uh, this is a game that I have a storied past with. I kind of wanted to buy more Wii U games around third year of college and the Nintendo Selects range was a really good idea because for someone like me who didn't have a lot of money to spare uh, a Wii U game for 20 euro was pretty okay and and you're gonna see a pattern here like 20 euro seems to be like the, the the sweet spot for me it's like oh yeah that i'm gonna get a wii u game for that um but this game for me never clicked with me and i don't know what it was but this particular mario game 
just never connected with me on a certain level. I tried to play it for the channel, uh, but I had to stop after a while because again, as I said, it's it's there's no point playing a game you're not having total fun with. But I do think that it's good for like people who are into that type of game. Uh, for me, I was never really a person who was into side-scrolling uh, platformers. It was never my thing. I much prefer kind of like a 3D platformer, kind of like, not an open world, but like overworld, I suppose. Or even like the Crash Bandicoot style of kind of going ahead behind the camera, behind the shoulder as well, is kind of cool to me. Super Mario 3D World. This game connected with me. I love the visuals in this game, I love how fun this game is, I love how the, like, the cartoonish like nature of it looks, I love the music. Um, I finished this game, I didn't get every single collector's item in this game, but I finished this game and had a smile on my face, because it was so simple, so easy to finish, it had no like, like emotional ties, it was just like, hey, play this fun Mario game, and I did, and I had a great time. Another game from the Nintendo Selects range, it's Wind Waker HD. I need to replay this game. I love this game. There's something, there's there's so many things, not something, there's so many things about this game that I love. Uh, whether it be the style or the combat or the world itself. I love exploring this entire vast ocean. It's so amazing to me. And every time I think about this game, it's a good sign because I automatically just like, kind of like, not tense up, but I feel like really emotional and that's like a good feeling for me. Because I remember this game so fondly, there was not a hair out of place with this, and it was one of the easiest Let's Plays I've ever done because it was just so smooth to go through. I will have to replay this at some point on the channel because, again, I didn't do a lot of the side stuff, and I get comments like that all the time, you didn't do the side stuff, and it's like, yeah, you know, I was a different player back then, I think I really was, and I think Zelda kind of changed my mind on how I should play games. Um, or at least how I should play games on the channel, I should say. But it's a fantastic game. Wind Waker is just a fantastic fucking game. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. The day I got this, um, I just had surgery on my lower back, so I couldn't walk anywhere. I couldn't lie down on my back. I couldn't sit down. Uh, but I still had to do a Let's Play of this. Um, so I texted my mother, and I was like, Hey, like, I hope this isn't too much of a bother, but if you're around town at any point, uh, could you pick up my pre-order and bring it over to me? Um, of the, of the, the uh, Legend of Zelda uh, Breath of the Wild. And she was like, sure, because, you know, I, I, she knew I couldn't get anywhere. And there was something so special about seeing this case, seeing this beautiful case, and opening it up and putting it into the Wii U, and then, like, having this update file happen. I was so ecstatic about playing this game. And it delivered in every single way. And again, if you own a Wii U, but you don't own a Switch, and you want to play Breath of the Wild, Really, this game is 36 euro right now on the Wii U. That's a bargain. That's a bargain for this game. And it's truly fantastic. I don't think... To me, it is the best open world game ever made. I know a lot of people disagree with me on that fact. I remember a while back on Twitter, I said that and someone called me like, You're a Nintendo fanboy. And it's like, I like I never played Nintendo as a kid. Like, where do you think my... I don't have... Like, I can't have nostalgia for something I never played in my nostalgic years. Like, get a grip. It's just a fantastic game. And the hate for Breath of the Wild does get a little bit crazy. Obviously, some people just don't like it. That's okay. Uh, but for me, this open world, I love I loved weapon durability. I'm sorry. Kill me. I love weapon durability. I love shrines. I love moving dungeons that have, like, context within the world. I love how vast and empty sometimes this world feels. Because it felt like a post-apocalyptic world. I love Link. I love, I love Zelda. I love every single little character you meet. Because this world is so open and empty. Every single character you meet along the way, no matter how small, means something because there's so few and far between. And I think uh, when I went to Kakariga Village in this game, I lived there. I lived there for like three days in between recordings of videos. I'll always remember this game as the game that I played um, standing up. I played this whole game standing up because I couldn't sit down after my surgery. <laughs> so like, I played this whole game standing up, but who cares, it was still fantastic. My voice is probably kind of muffled right now. That's because I'm showing off uh, my version of The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess HD. Uh, one of my favorite games ever made, and this, co this collector's edition that I bought 
I don't know what I was thinking when I went in there in the shop one day. He said someone cancelled their order of this and he was like, hey, you can spend an extra 20 euro and get this version. You get the soundtrack, you get the copy of the game, and you also get uh, a Wolf Link amiibo. And I think at the time, like, I wasn't even crazy into Zelda, but I was like, yeah, sure, like, why not? Like, why not? And, like, it kind of pays off because it looks really good on the shelf uh, behind me here when I do have it up there. It looks really great. And Twilight Princess, as you guys know, is one of my favorite games ever made. This glorious world, this glorious adventure that you get to go through. It's very dark, it's very sad, but I think overall Twilight Princess is one of the best Zelda games ever made. In terms of, like, gameplay, at the very least, I think it's probably the best. I have no regrets about, like, going through that world twice. You know what I mean? It was one of my favorite things to do. I think the Twilight Princess second playthrough was probably, like, top five favorite playthroughs I've ever done because I love that world so much. There's characters in that game that, like, I'll never forget. There's people, there's, there's world, like, there's something so special about, like, each, each, like, location in this game. And again, it's not because, like, again, it's a very vast open world, because that's, that's fine. Okay, put that all aside. Because every single location, every single village, town, city you go to, has its own kind of, like, culture, has its own kind of, like, way of living, and that's kind of true for all Zelda games, but in this game, it truly did put it to the surface for me, that I was, like, kind of realized, oh, this is the Legend of Zelda. This is the Zelda series. And I was hooked from there. Guys, that's gonna do for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm sorry again if there's some visual weirdness. I'm sorry if my hair is kind of weird right now. Um, I haven't brushed it or anything this morning. Uh, so we'll see what, what, what it will look like. Uh, but in general, I had fun making this and I hope you guys enjoyed it. I will see you guys very soon. And if you want more of these type of videos, please let me know. I, I have a few ideas for stuff I want to do. And yeah, I'll see you very soon.